Okay, so if you have read and understood, considering it clinical examination session, kindly begin. Okay. Um, first of all, I will um, wash my hands, then yes. introduce myself to the patient, and also confirm his name and date of birth. Uh, once I've uh, done that, I, then I would uh, want to explain what I want to do for yes. him. I want to examine his uh, um, his his foot. Yes. And I'll be doing this by watching him walk to look at uh, both feet. And also, I would also uh, assess one or two, I, I would feel and also assess movements of uh, both feet. So I would want to op obtain the verbal uh, consent. Once I've done that, then I would um, expose him. I need him to be on his shorts, thus his Good. boxer shorts only. Then... Um, my examination will start by initially I'll watch him walk. I need yes. him to walk. I would offer him support and I would uh, make him walk a distance. He would if if it's if he's having a foot drop, you have a high stepping gait. So once I've noticed this gait, then <clears throat> I would also ask him to make an attempt to walk on his heel to assess the uh, the for dorsiflexion. I would assess that. Then I also tell him to work on his toes for plantar flexion. This will make me to assess the L5, S1 for plantar flexion, then L4, L5 for uh, dorsiflexion. Then once he has done that, then <clears throat> I would want him to stand. Then I would observe. I would want to inspect for any form of uh, obvious deformity. I would look for any skin changes, any scar on his um, limbs. And also if there are any form of... Uh, <laughs> Uh, and also if there are any scar, or any <clears throat> uh, any abnormalities in the limb, and if there's also any form of uh, asymmetry in the bulk of the muscles, I'll look at the bulk anteriorly, posteriorly, and also from the side. Once I've done this, my, my next uh, series of examination will be done while he's uh, lying supine. So I would uh, want to, first of all, I would ask him again if he's having any pain before I go ahead. So I don't... Um, and if he's having any form of discomfort, I'll be gentle and I'll also stop. So I would want to test for any form of, uh, I would assess the temperature. I'll do that bilaterally, starting from the knee downwards. Then I also I test for tenderness. <clears throat> I'll be watching him if there's any form of grimace. Then once I've assessed that, then I'll test the pulses. The pulses I'm interested in here, I want to check the popliteal, the dorsalis pedis, and also the... Uh, the posterior tibial. I'll start with the, I'll start all my examination with the normal foot and end with the affected uh, <clears throat> limb. So once I've uh, done this, then the next uh, step, I would want to assess the, uh, the sensation. So I would assess the dorsal cord, the sensation, the uh, lateral side above the lateral malleolus, the S1. I would first of all describe what I want to do. I'll use the cotton wool touch a normal, um, maybe touch his upper limb, then tell him um, to close his eyes. And I'll do that for the limbs. I'll test uh, the spinothalamic tract with uh, a, a pin. Then I'll test the dorsal column, the light touch with uh, a cotton wool. Then above the lateral malleolus is S1. Above the medial malleolus, L4. Dorsum of the foot is L5. So I assess all this. Once I've done that, <clears throat> then I'll also do the range of movements, the actively and passively, dorsiflexion, plantar flexion, inversion, and inversion. I'll describe all these movements to him and I would also do them passively. So once I've done that, I'll do coordination, heel to shin. And uh, once, I've, once I'm through with that for both limbs, then I'll test, I'll assess the reflexes. 
the ang I'll do the I'll let his uh, his leg will hand will hang over the bed and I would assess for or I could just flex the knee and also support it with my forearm. I'll assess the knee reflexes uh, in both limbs and also assess the ankle reflexes. So once I've uh, <clears throat> done this, I would then I would thank him. Then I would wash. Yes, I would test for tone. Leg, I would leg lift and leg roll. Then uh, I would thank him. How would you do that? No, I would do it with the. I would just. It would be sitting down. Then I would. Or it, it would like. It would like supine. Then I would just roll the limbs. I would roll yes. the entire lower limb and I also lift it to test uh, if there's any form of uh, reduced tone. Then I could also do ankle clonus. Yes. By dorsiflex, I would dorsiflex the ankle and leave it to see if there are several taps and if it's positive or not, which will, we can show a, an upper motor neuron lesion. So once I also do the T-nail sign, this is very important. I will yes. palpate the head of the fibula and see if there's any tingling sensation. So once I've done all this, then I would thank the patient. And you uh, also uh, palpate uh, the popliteal fossa for mass. Yes, yes, I'll palpate the mass when I'm checking for the pulse. So I will thank yes. him, I'll offer him assistance to help him dress up and uh, I'll wash my hands, then I'll summarize my patient. Okay, can you present your examination now? Yes, in summary, I've, present, I've uh, examined a 56 year old uh, man that complains of numbness in the uh, of the right uh, lower limb. He has a, a high stepping gait with the right uh, foot affected. There's a, <laughs> there's a scar around the lateral uh, around, the, around the lateral part of the knee and also he has um, reduced movement both dorsiflexion and plantar flexion and uh, he also has loss of sensation around the uh, lateral part so of the... what are your provisional diagnosis? Yeah, my provisional diagnosis is um, he has a right uh, foot drop, possibly secondary to uh, a common perineal nerve injury. Yes. It could also have uh, a sciatic nerve injury affecting yes. the common perineal component. Yes. It could also have uh, the L4, L5 disc prolapse, which is affecting... Okay. Uh, what investigations would you carry out to confirm your diagnosis? Yes, I want to do an uh, electromyography, which yes. will help. I also do an MRI of the, uh, of the knee joint and also the ankle joint. Then for his age, I also I also do uh, I, I want to rule out diabetes to rule out any metabolic disease, so I'll do his random blood sugar. And okay, what are the treatment options that. available for this patient? Treatment option include non-operative. I offer him physiotherapy. I could also offer him uh, ankle foot uh, orthosis. Then uh, surgically, he could have a tendon transplant. All right, good. What uh, more would you have done to complete your examination? Yes, in completing my examination, I would have uh, loved to do uh, a, a knee exam, a foot exam, and also a complete uh, neurovascular yes, examination. Yes, spine and hip yes, along yes. with the knee. Yes, and spine, spine and hip mark. Yes, hip because this is already put. So, all right. Yes. Good, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Few seconds left, five, six. All right, good, thank you. In, like uh, the way we were going, I told you the things that you missed. That was basically the popliteal fossa and the muscles.